won't do it without you. Okay. Hey, and welcome to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert, and I am happy to say that today I am joined as my stage manager and cameraman and, and sound person, uh, my lovely wife, Evie. Won't you, won't, Evie, won't you just join us? Thank you very much. Hello. <laughs> there you go. We just got a mature rating. And it makes me happy to have my wife here, and I need something to make me happy, and I'm sure you do too, because yesterday... We as a nation hit a terrible milestone in the pandemic because the United States just passed one million coronavirus cases. Though some disease researchers have estimated that the true number of infections may be about 10 times the known number. That's not exactly comforting some disease researchers. You never hear a mom telling her kid, I know you're scared of the monster under your bed, but actually there could be 10 monsters under your bed, but there's no way to know because they're invisible. Good night. Even more tragically, the number of U.S. coronavirus fatalities is now greater than U.S. losses in the Vietnam War. And just like the Vietnam War, Donald Trump is A-W-O-L. That's how you spell a-hole, right? Yes. Okay. So America has over 1 million coronavirus cases and more fatalities than Vietnam. There's no getting around it. It's a solemn day. For everyone except presidential son-in-law and man watching you enjoy that lollipop, Jared Kushner. Here's what Jared said this morning on the Fox and the Friends. I think that we've uh, achieved all the different milestones that are needed. So the, gov the government, federal government, rose to the challenge, and this is a great success story. Uh, and, and I think that that's really, you know, what needs to be told. Yes, it's a great story. More people dying under this administration in 100 days than died in 20 years of the Vietnam War. That's a story that needs to be told. Perhaps in the blockbuster movie, Preventable Apocalypse Now. And I'm being told we have a clip. The success. The success. The president was asked about those infection numbers yesterday. Today, the U.S. hit a grim milestone of one million cases of the coronavirus. Uh, back in late February, you predicted that the number of cases would go down to zero. How did we get from your prediction of zero to one million? Well, it will go down to zero, ultimately. Okay, sure. Technically, in time, we all eventually go down to zero, which is the ultimate target weight. Trump has been criticized for the lack of testing, but he doesn't see the problem. We're doing more testing than any other country in the world by far. So we're going to show more cases because we're doing much, much more testing, double anybody else. Somebody said if you add everybody else combined, that would be a number. He's right. That would be a number. Tomorrow, he's going to do colors and shapes. Plus, it may be a number, but don't believe Trump. That number is not one. Because when it comes to per capita testing, the United States is below the world average and about the same as Belarus. Now, if you don't know, Belarus was formerly part of the Soviet Union and currently a country you don't want to be about the same as. Now, this press conference was supposed to be about everything he was doing to help small businesses, and Trump hit him with some philosophy. Small business, it's actually a very big business when you think about it. Small is actually very big. At least that's what I paid Stormy to say. <laughs> the White House is having to do some cleanup after Mike Pence visited the Mayo Clinic yesterday and wouldn't wear a mask. Finally, a medical explanation for why seeing Mike Pence's face makes you feel ill. And it explains why his Secret Service agent was wearing this one. Pence was asked about his disregard for the rules, and he said this. Since I, I don't have the coronavirus, I, I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to be here, to be able to speak to these researchers, these incredible healthcare personnel, and look them in the eye and, and say thank you. You can still look them in the eye with a mask. It's not a blindfold. Also, I don't have coronavirus isn't an excuse for not protecting other people. That's like a guy saying, I don't need to wear a condom. I want to look you in the eye and say, thank you. That was polite. No, you don't like that one? Too bad. By the way, for Mike Pence, looking you in the eye is second base. Pence pointed out that he's pretty sure he's not contagious. I'm tested for the coronavirus on a regular basis, and everyone who is around me is tested for the coronavirus. 
None of us can get a test. And you're out there bragging about how often you're tested. That's like Mother Teresa visiting the hungry while scarfing a hoagie. The reason we have to wear masks is the virus is still out there. And we have to be wary of when to gather in public spaces, which we're about to do a lot more of because the biggest mall operator in the United States plans to reopen 49 of them. No! Bad mall! That's not a good idea. We must keep social distancing from Auntie Anne. She's very old. And so are the pretzels. The malls are making special safety announcements. And food court seating will be spaced to encourage social distancing. And reusable trays will be banished. That's right. Banished. Hear ye, hear ye. His Noble Highness Burger King hereby banishes from the realm all reusable trays. And for failing to bear him a son, Her Majesty the Dairy Queen shall be beheaded with a plastic spork. As a further precaution, in restrooms, every other sink and urinal will be taped off. Well, that's at least good news for one business. Ralph's sink and urinal tape. It's boom time, baby. In your face, Johnny's big garbage bag you put over the whole toilet. With these malls opening up, it's an exciting opportunity for stores that cater to social isolation, like Forever 21 Feet Apart and GameStop. There was a really inspiring message today from New York governor and man watching Stephen Miller swallow a mouse, Andrew Cuomo. At today's COVID briefing, Cuomo stressed that it's ordinary Americans like you who are leading the way on the coronavirus response. And arts and crafts are involved. I'm going to show you a self-portrait that was done by American people. This is a self-portrait of America. Okay? That's a self-portrait of America. And you know what it spells? It spells love. We received thousands of masks from all across America, unsolicited, in the mail, homemade, creative, personal, with beautiful notes from all across the country, literally. Just saying, thinking about you, we care, we love you, we want to help. That is beautiful. But you know what I bet those notes didn't say? Why don't you staple gun these masks to a wall? Again, it is a beautiful, it's a lovely gesture. God bless everyone who did this. But we're going through a pandemic. I'm not sure the best use of medical equipment is making a collage. That's like a food bank saying, thanks for your donation. This can of beans will be a great addition to our bean can wall. If you look closely, it spells bean. Now, you weren't sure where that joke was going, did you? You're not sure. Like, was this going to be worth the trip? Totally worth the trip. I don't know if it was. Totally worth the trip. <laughs> There's some good COVID news out there. Researchers at Oxford University have developed a vaccine that's effective in monkeys. Ooh, those lucky monkeys. Always getting the first injections. While the rest of us are cooped up at home, these monkeys are walking around resuming their normal lives, like sports, cat washing writing my show. Researchers inoculated six monkeys with their vaccine. These animals were then exposed to heavy quantities of the virus, I assume by going bowling in Georgia. But here's the good news. More than 28 days later, all six were healthy. This is important because according to the researcher who conducted the test, the rhesus macaque is pretty much the closest thing we have to humans. Well, any drunk, lonely zookeeper could have told you that. Oxford scientists had already been working on a vaccine for a different strain of coronavirus. So if this vaccine proves safe and effective, the first few million doses could be available by September. Yes, just in time to go out and rake the fall leaves and then use them as toilet paper because I'm definitely going to run out by then. This vaccine presents one ethical dilemma. See, scientists can't expose test subjects to a dangerous virus on purpose, leading one researcher to say, 
we're the only people in the country who want the number of new infections to stay up for another few weeks so we can test our vaccine. Really? You're the only people? Have you met Vice President Disease Vector? Coronavirus is impacting every aspect of our lives, and now it's come for our most precious resource, award shows. Because the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences has announced that due to the nationwide lockdown, the 2021 Oscars will consider films that didn't play in theaters. Okay, well, this is huge news for all 412 Hallmark Christmas movies like The Christmas Santa, A Santa for Christmas, All I Want for Christmas is You, Santa, and Twas the Night After Christmas. It's mostly about breaking down boxes. The Academy stressed that this change isn't permanent and the temporary rules are very strict because to be considered, the stream film must have already had a planned theatrical release. And like previous Oscars, the films must be about a white person solving racism. I've got to say, I agree with the Academy here. In fact, I think they should go further because you know what movies released straight to streaming are? TV. Ipso tuxedo. I should be eligible for an Oscar. My show is exactly like a movie. There's a soundtrack, there's big stars, and no time to go sneak off to the bathroom. I usually just go during meanwhile. We've got a show for you tonight, and it's a good show. My guests are Senator Amy Klobuchar and Mayor Pete Buttigieg, but when we return, sex. What, why are you laughing when I said sex? Why does why does the idea of sex and me make you laugh? Stop it. Stop? Okay. I should stop. Stop.